Mazda has just given us a glimpse into their future with flavors for every taste. Over the Mazda press room, Mazda announces new technology and product policy towards 2030 based on sustainable Zoom Zoom. When was the last time we heard Zoom Zoom come out of Mazda? Maybe the early 2010s? Anytime we get new Mazda news on their upcoming platform, engines, technology. You guys, if you wouldn't have clicked, you're salivating over today's news. So I'm so excited to bring this to you. And it's still just, just a glimpse. It's not like a full product reveal or anything like that. We're gonna have to wait maybe a year. That's the good news. There's other good news in here as well, but it's just exciting. So if you guys are excited for Mazda, make sure to smash a like button, subscribe for more. Sustainable Zoom Zoom 2030. They're having every single vehicle in their lineup will be electrified in some way, shape, or form by 2030. Policy number one to get there, accumulation of technological assets in line with our building block strategy and their utilization for high efficient manufacturing. Now into the juicy bits, we are continuously enhancing our internal combustion engines. Now they only mention two internal combustion engines here. We know that there are, are they have more. But they're specifically saying the Skyactiv-X, X, which is the two liter uh, Skyactiv X engine, compression ignition, as well as spark ignition. It has a lean supercharger. It is a Frankenstein alien engine of the future. We don't get it here in the States, at least not yet. And the other engine uh, they're talking about is their all new straight six engines, which they give us pictures for. But hold on, we'll go into those pictures in a little bit. And then the spreadsheet after that the enhancement of their internal combustion engines and electrification technologies are part of the skyactive multi-solution scalable architecture which is used in transverse power units and our small products like the monster 3 the the uh, cx30 the cx5 and longitudinal power units in our large products well what are the large products well the cx9 is obviously the largest so that's got to be going rear wheel drive slash all wheel drive with this inline six. Uh, the Mazda six was just canceled. So if they decide to call it a Mazda six, the next generation, they can do that or they might just call it something else. There's talk about this new Mazda coming out of the Alabama plant that has just opened with Toyota. Mazda Toyota manufacturing in Alabama will have a Toyota hybrid powered vehicle. We learn more, a little bit more about that sort of relationship uh, going forward today. And based off this new architecture, they'll deliver multiple electrification solutions to meet various customers needs environmental regulations and the electric power generating infrastructure in the market which is sorely lacking here in the united states uh i just heard recently that california and texas are again wanting people to reduce their electricity consumption uh so they don't have a power grid failure so it's like okay well hopefully by the time there are millions of electric vehicles on the road there's actually enough power to supply it yeah, I, I'm not so hopeful on that. But in addition, we'll introduce Mazda's unique EV platform, Sky Active EV Scalable Architecture 2025 for EVs with various sizes and body styles and types. So here I was thinking, I'm like, well, Mazda hasn't announced anything in conjunction with Toyota when it comes to the ETNGA uh, architecture that Daihatsu uh, Subaru is going to be using as well as Toyota, of course. But yeah, we didn't hear anything. Now we get news that Mazda is working on their own EV platform in 2025 will be coming out. So that is really exciting. I did not expect that, expect that. but there is a strong possibility that they could be uh, almost duplicating Toyota's ETNGA architecture. Uh, and I, I do think there will be some similarities as Big Brother will share its technology with Mazda in this situation. But hey, Mazda is not using Toyota to build their EVs, uh, fully battery electric vehicles, I should say, not hybrids. We'll talk about that. Hey, the second policy is the promotion of electrification introduction of pro products with this multi-solution strategy. Okay, so this next generation of Skyactiv platform, the scalable architecture, will be introduced mainly for Japan, Europe, US, China, and the Asian markets between 2022 and 2025 and will consist of five hybrid models with a what well, it's not an asterisk but the number one footnote we'll, we'll touch on that in a second five plug-in hybrid models and three ev models now just looking at five plug-in hybrid models there is no asterisk here 
or footnote. So let's look at what this number one footnote. So five hybrid models is what we're looking up here. This is excluding mild hybrids, but including models equipped with Toyota's hybrid system supplied from Toyota. So it makes me wonder, okay, well, Mazda and Toyota literally just opened a new plant, plant in Alabama, and we know it's gonna have a Toyota hybrid coming out of that uh, facility. We just don't know exactly what Toyota hybrid system is gonna be using. More than likely a two and a half liter or a two liter hybrid four cylinder system. Naturally aspirated, 99% sure, but let's go back up. Five plug-in hybrid models. One of these has to be the MX-30 plug-in hybrid with the rotary, uh, I guess, range extender. Technically, that's still a plug-in hybrid. And there will be three EV models. Then remember, this is just 2022 to 2025, so three EV models coming from 2022 to 2025 uh, makes me wonder because their their new scalable EV architecture, right, is not available until 2025. So what could these three EV models be based off of? I mean, you could probably count the MX-30 in there without the range extender. So that's one, maybe a small uh, Mazda 3 or something like that, or C, uh, CX-3 for smaller markets. They could just convert that into an electric vehicle for compliance reasons. And I guess it's possible that they could rebadge uh, let's say the BZ4X or something like that, like Subaru is kind of doing uh, with the Solterra. So this is probably the biggest mystery for me is the three EV models. If they're not gonna have their own platform online by 2025, are they just swapping out existing model power plants and putting in uh, electric? That makes the most sense to me. Uh, I guess they could still use Toyota's platform as well until 2025. But guys, I'll see you down below on where you think these EV models are going to be conjured from. Now, they're also seeing several products with the scalable EV architecture will be introduced between 2025, like I was just saying. And based on this product launch, we assume that 100% of our products will have some level of electrification and our EV ratio will be 25% by 2030. Now, EV ratio, does that mean hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and fully electric? I'm not quite sure. The third pillar is safety technologies, and this is going to include Mazda's co-pilot concept in their vehicles, and this will debut on their large products, so the next generation Mazda 6, rear-wheel drive, CX-9 rear-wheel drive. Remember, they have all-wheel drive capabilities, but this will be coming in 2022, and this will be the first iteration of co-pilot. To me, it sounds a lot like uh, Lexus's demonstration of Teammate that I actually had hands on myself. Um, to me, I see it as the next logical step for cruise control. Uh, with a lot of traffic, I, I didn't really like the system. I was driving during like rush hour and I did not like the autonomous system just because it drives differently than how I would drive. And I like to be in control of the vehicle a little bit more. Now, now I'm not talking about the co-pilot, which it can as well, but it sounds a lot similar to the Lexus teammate, which I'm talking about, which I'm sure Lexus and Toyota are sharing their technology with Mazda here on this. Anyways, the vehicle can be hands-free. They, they recommend your, your hands on, on the steering wheel. You can always override what the vehicle is doing. But when it comes to rush hour traffic and very quick decisions and fitting into tight places, I just did not like how the teammate drove with traffic. Now, I would be happy to use it on long trips on the interstate uh, and have some hands-free driving in that regard. But when you're in the city on the on the freeways with traffic, I I'm not a big fan of autonomy. It just is way too scary for me at this point in time. I'm too much of a control freak. Anyways, pillar number four, development of technologies for connected services and software technologies, the foundation for next generation mo mobility surface. Well, a large part of that is over the air updates. So that is great to see. We will be getting these in Mazda products starting next year. And this is the continuum of Japanese OEM companies. Uh, if we go down here, working on this connected services. So uh, Toyota connected services, which is going to be debuting a big time with their technology in, the, in this uh, 2022 NX with the, the new uh, Lexus interface. Mazda is working on it with them as well as Suzuki, Subaru, and Daihatsu. Of course, Toyota as well. So there's there's the Avengers, the Japanese car Avengers right there. Now Mazda Copilot can also pull over the vehicle if the person is no longer responsive and there are, there are infrared sensors and cameras and stuff inside the vehicle to make sure 
you are alert and aware. One, they have safety in mind uh, when this is this happens, but you know they don't want person people falling asleep at the wheel because they're no longer interacting and having to stay alert to drive the car. So the car will pull over itself. Lex's teammate does the exact same thing. That's why I'm thinking this co-pilot is very similar technologically speaking to the Lexus teammate. Anyways, human-centered development philosophy in a time defined by carbon neutrality in case. So yeah, it's just their commitment to a healthier planet, essentially, and healthier people. In line with our corporate vision, Maz aims to become a brand that creates special bonds with customers by enriching their lives with an experience of car ownership that provides the joy of driving and pure essence of cars. I love this, provides the joy of driving. Mazda is one of the few companies out there that really identify with the joy of driving. Now it's time to go over these engines from uh, Mazda here, these new platforms. So this is uh, the new rear wheel drive platform. As you can see, the drive shaft, a, a significantly sized drive shaft going to the rear wheels here. Now this is a large diesel inline six mild hybrid 48 volt. I, I would assume this is where the battery pack uh, is for the mild hybrid system. You also have a new transmission here and an all new diesel, which we'll get into the spreadsheet. But if you guys have a little bit more of an engineering mind, if you could explain what you see here that is maybe a little bit out of the ordinary, I would appreciate that. Uh, but the one that we're more likely to get here in the United States is this. So look how little things change with this uh, platform when you put in an inline six diesel or gasoline. Okay, diesel, gasoline, diesel, gasoline. Very little changes, so this should help Mazda be a little bit more profitable as they won't have to change as much vehicle per vehicle. Now, here's the new inline six that we haven't seen. Uh, I guess we've seen one picture of it, but we haven't seen in a diagram like this on how it connects to the all-wheel drive system, the rear-wheel drive setup as well. Uh, so mild hybrid here, uh, of course, like that diesel, and I don't know if this is a Skyactiv-X X option. This almost looks like a turbocharger setup in the back here. But again, I'm not an engineer by any means, so I don't really know how to explain what I'm looking at. And this is an all new inline six technology. I was, I was looking at um, the inline six from BMW and trying to kind of match it up and make sense of it. And I, they're just very, very different. So if you guys could help us out there and explain what's going on, that'd be great. Now, this is the all new plug-in hybrid four cylinder, and they say large gasoline engine, uh, plug-in hybrid here. So it doesn't look like a large gasoline engine plug-in hybrid to me. This is a probably a two or at most two and a half liter four cylinder engine uh, with a, uh, a plug-in hybrid setup. You can see how large these battery packs here are to me they look larger than let's say the rav4 primes and and that has an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack so i mean we could be looking at something that has more range possibly 50 miles of range here again that's just me taking a stab at it but these are pretty large plug-in hybrid battery packs just from the looks of it but you can still see it's all driven right here by an electric motor there's no uh e-axle because we have the mechanical drive shaft powering the rear wheels. So this is a very uh, BMW-esque plug-in hybrid sort of setup here. Um, so that's really exciting to see. And guys, if you can get more information out of this than I'm able to, I would appreciate that. Put it in the comments below. And unfortunately, this last one is potato resolution. I don't know what's going on here, but this is the, the rotary extender, extender. This is the first time that I think we've seen a, a sort of a diagram for it. So a large battery pack down here. It looks like three units compared to the plug-in hybrids, two units. Now, just based off of the changes with the rear wheel drive platform uh, that we just looked at with the diesel and the inline six and the, the plug-in hybrid, this looks like it's more based off of uh, their current technology. This could be like the MX-30, for example, uh, with a, a rotary engine inside of it. And MX-30 doesn't get great range. If you convert it to US miles, maybe 120 miles of range. But if you have a range extender here and you have a large enough gas tank as well, you'd be able to get a really great no compromise efficiency out of this setup. So I cannot wait to see Mazda share more information with the rotary extender, uh, rotary range extender plug-in hybrid, 
and we're gonna go over to the spreadsheet. Again, another look at the, the engines that we just saw. Now this is all for the rear wheel drive uh, platform. Uh, inline six here, diesel inline six here, and then here is your plug-in hybrid inline uh, four cylinder. And just, if this is a three liter, which we're expecting, this has got to be, what, a two liter at max, just based off the size. But it is possible if they wanted to use uh, Toyota's hybrid system, because they said that they're using Toyota's hybrids for several vehicles in their press release. So they could, you know, put a turbo on it and get plug-in hybrid performance out of this thing. But it, we'll have to wait to see. So Sky Active X inline six, doesn't mean we're going to get a Sky Active X inline six. Uh, this is just me guessing. Now, based off that diagram, I can't confirm or deny whether that engine we saw is a Sky Active X or not, or if it's a turbo. And they could definitely twin turbo it as well. And you gotta keep in mind, these are, are going to be mild hybrids uh, for most of the world. I just don't see them implementing mild hybrids everywhere else and then leaving out the mild hybrid technology in the United States. More than likely, these are going to be mild hybrid standard, especially the Sky Active X inline six. But when I'm talking about the, the Sky Active diesel inline six and the gasoline turbo inline six, there will be variants that have mild hybrids. Just don't know if we're going to get them here stateside. 325 horsepower, I'm expecting if they turbo it with over 400 uh, pound feet of torque, they could definitely get more out of this system. Give it twin turbo, and you're talking ridiculous numbers. Uh, so that's really exciting for me. I'm sure you guys are pretty excited. I mean, this this would be essentially the Japanese inline six revival here to challenge BMW again. Uh, and it, it reminds me of uh, the RB inline sixes and the Jay-Z engines of old. Yeah, just amazing. Anyways, Sky Active X is still gonna be around for a long time. And we know that this vehicle or this platform is gonna debut in 2022. So I guess I can put 2022 here now, which is really exciting for all of these setups. Now, Sky Active X here in the United States, I really don't know when it's going to come. I think it's going to be a while, probably like 2023 at the earliest. And the plug-in hybrid, whether it's a turbo or not, I don't know when it's going to come to the United States, but hopefully we get it at launch with the new Mazda 6 and CX-9 when that comes out, hopefully next year. But guys, that's just my take. Take all this with a grain of salt. That's probably the first time I've said that, which it's important when you're watching my spreadsheets because it's not official. It's just me speculating. Guys, I'm going to end it there. Uh, I can talk about Mazda for way too long. This video before editing is over 22 minutes. And I just get really excited because to me, Mazda is the most exciting uh, Japanese manufacturer at this point in time. You can argue that if you want, but... Mazda to me is the most exciting and I'll see you guys down in the comments. Are you excited for Mazda? Do you think they, they are the most exciting Japanese manufacturer out there right now? Hard to argue that. I'll see you guys down below. Catch you in the next video. Peace out.